Today we're gonna to talk about something that has a lot of differences throughout the industry. There's a lot of different options, there's a lot of different opinions, and there's just, just a lot of different ideas throughout the industry, and that is our closing wheels, right? We look around the industry, there's, there's hundreds of different closing wheels, different ideas, a lot of different mantras when it comes to the different types of closing wheels. Um, and there's different, all these different wheels, even the ones you see up here today, just a small sample of what's out there, have different environments where they do the best job, right? Each one of these wheels strives in a different location. And if we get out of that location, we really tend to struggle. We tend to struggle closing the furrow. We do almost too good of a job. And then we create compaction on the sidewalls in some spots, or we don't get closed at all. And that's the worst case scenario is we can't get closing at all. So when we look at these different wheels, there's completely different styles. And not only is there different styles, diameters, and different things like that, there's also different settings when we come back to the back of the row unit. There's different widths that we can have these wheels at, and of course everyone has a different idea of what their wheels should be. And there's also different, different ways that they would be better closer or wider. There's, and then there's your T-handle. You can look at your different notch settings and set those in different locations that would be good maybe in a, with this wheel would be good in a notch one. Well, when we move halfway through the field, we get into a wet spot, we might want to put that in float or we get a different wheel, we want to put it all the way down. Well, we might need to change that. And are we, we're really not going to change that throughout the field. And that's going to be hard to do. We're going to have to get out of the tractor and change those constantly to do the best job. So with those different combinations of width, we have different amounts of force we can put on. We really want to try to take that guesswork out. We really want to try to do our best job in all conditions throughout the entire field. And that's something that precision planning is really striving to do is to create, take out the guesswork and what closing wheels we should use and what force we should put them at and really narrow it down to one unit that does the best job throughout the entire field in a multitude of conditions. And that product's called Furrow Force. Furrow Force really works off of two stages. Our first stage wheels here are do, do the job of lifting the furrow and closing it with depth that we can see on the side here, we have our diff different lines. And also, our handle up here controls our depth. So we have that ability to change with our different planning depths, with smart depth. And if we go shallower, we can shallow it up a little bit so we're not getting too deep. So, so you look at that and you see, Tanner, that's really not controlling this. That's controlling these wheels back here, which is our second stage. Our second stage is what is our treader wheels. It's what, our, what pats down our furrow that these wheels lift up and close. These wheels give it a nice pat to conserve moisture. So these wheels back here also act like our gauge wheels for delta force. They do a good job of giving us a reading of how much pressure is on here. So that's what really controls our depth here when we change this T-handle is whenever we put these up these, this allows it to move and to tread the ground and to keep these at a certain depth that we need. And that reading that it gives us, we see in the 2020 called margin. That margin has three main settings that precision planning talks about, and that is 15 pounds, 35 pounds, and 55 pounds. That 15 pounds is our light setting where we're going to want to set it early in the year whenever it's wet, and we really don't want to have these wheels put much pressure on to keep it nice and closed, but not to create bricks where we pound the soil and then we have sidewall compaction. Now we get a little later in the year in our no-till conditions and we have good moisture, but it's not too wet. We're going to jump up to the standard setting, which is 35 pounds. That 35 pounds gives us good closing, but also gives us a good pat down on this second stage wheel to allow us to conserve moisture. And then finally, if we're in some conventional type situations or late in the, in the year with some no-till and we're, we're really struggling to find moisture, we might want to bump up to 55 pounds. 55 pounds gives us the strongest amount of pat on the back here to conserve the maximum amount of moisture while maintaining closing. Precision planning has done a great job with trying to eliminate the guesswork of our different closing wheels and our different systems to combine it all into one. And if you have any questions regarding furrow force or regarding closing wheels, please contact us today at Precision Agri Services. Thank you.